Hello and welcome to Blade Runner Rep Detect on Vassal, the tutorial video. I'm glad you could make it. I'm IJ Thompson. I'm the designer of the game and also the creator of the Vassal module. So I suppose you've got me to blame for all this. And speaking of blame, I should say right up front that this game is completely unlicensed, completely unauthorized, completely for free and completely for fun. So if the license holders have any issue with the existence of this game, just get a hold of me and I will take everything down in the blink of an eye. Okay, now let's move on. Now this video is going to assume that you're at least passingly familiar with the workings of Vassal. If you're not, I'm sure there are videos or documents around that can help you. But for this video, we're just going to concern ourselves with Blade Runner. So let's select it up here. Wait a moment for things to get chugging and let's look for a game online. Okay, now here we are on the Vassal server. We've got our chat window over here, and here's our server controls. I am the only person around, which is not surprising because the game has not been published yet. So I want to make a room to put the game in right here in New Game. I'm going to type Video Tutorial. Hitting Enter puts me into the room immediately, so now that we're in a room, we can start a game. File, new game. Join game as which side? I think I'll be red. And there we are. Now the first thing I like to do in a game is to drag the chat window up a bit so it's not taking up quite so much room. Scroll it down. And the next thing I like to do is go over here to the magnifying glass, which is our zoom controls. Click on that and choose fit height. There we are, and I'll hit it again because my scroll bar is no longer at the bottom. Get a little more room. <clears throat> there we are. Okay, now another thing I like to do at the beginning of the game is just take these reference cards and place them just kind of off the board over there so that they're handy, but they're not right in the way. And as with any Vassal module, if you hover your mouse over a piece, it pops up full size so you can read all about it on your own time at your own speed. Okay, here we are. Now let's discuss the buttons from left to right. A lot of you Vassal people are going to be familiar with most of this, but let's cover that at least anyway. The first, undo last move. Let's say I was going to drag a card into my hand, but I slipped up and dropped it on the board by accident. Oops, I click undo. It's gone. And incidentally, Cards are drawn from a deck randomly in Vassal, so it's not like anybody knows what the top card on the deck is anymore, because it probably isn't. Cards are drawn at random. The next button, step forward through log file. So if you're playing an email game, that's how you would go through your opponent's move through everything they do by stepping forward. I'm not really sure if this game would work so well in an email form, but if anybody tries it, please come to the forums and let us know how it went. Now, the next one is show hide the server controls. Bam, they're gone. Bam, they're back. The only problem is now we got to drag the chat window back up again, but that's not the hardest thing to do in the world. Right, let's keep moving. Next button is resign. Now, in most Vassal modules, this button is called retire. If you have to leave in the middle of the game, you can click on that and you can give your your place up to someone else. They can come in and be you and finish the game. Because quitting is not the gentlemanly thing to do, quitting the program, because then no one can move your piece and the game is ended for everyone. So if you have to leave in the middle of a game, click resign. You can become an observer or join another side, if a side is available to you. But that's the classy thing to do. Let's cancel that. We're not going anywhere. Okay, hand. Now we're getting into the Blade Runner stuff. Hand. There are four choices available, only one of which you can click on. Your hand. In my case, red. There's red's hand. I can put it wherever I want to put it. If you have two monitors, you might like to put it in your other monitor. And incidentally, you don't have to click on the hand button every time. As you can see, there's a keyboard shortcut, which is easy to remember. I'm playing red, so my shortcut is Control R. Pam, it's gone. It's back. It's gone again. Control R. Or as the case may be, if you're blue, it's Control B, of course. Declare. Now this is new 
for the vassal module. In the tabletop version of this game, you don't need that. Um, players need to know what you're doing on your turn so they know what cards they want to play. Around the table, it's easy. If you reach for the dice, you plan to move. If you reach for the draw deck to investigate, you plan to stay at your location. But on Vassal, it's not that clear. So at the beginning of your turn, pop in there, declare what you're going to do. Are you going to move or are you going to stay? Well, I'm going to move. Now the next button, pretty self-explanatory. If you're moving, you want to roll your move. This is the roll of a d6. In this case, I got a 4. So let's just move our man. Four squares. Ta-da! Now, the next button is detection. If you're familiar with the rules of the game, you know that this is the void conf test from the film. When you have a suspect, you play it to your location and you roll detection. So you click on this button and the top is administer the void conf test, roll detection. In this case, we got a 1. Now let's imagine we were successful, though we probably wouldn't be with a 1, though it's possible. If you're successful, you get the result. What is the result of our test? The suspect is a replicant. So you would discard that suspect and find yourself in combat, which brings us to the next button. Combat. Click on it. You roll your combat. The Blade Runner, I got a 5. A nice roll. And the replicant got, or the sympathizer got, a 2. Hmm, that could have worked out pretty well for me. Then, of course, you have your discard phase, and you end your turn by announcing that you have ended your turn. And that's the bulk of the buttons you're going to be using most of the time in the game. But let's check out the others. Hand counts. Now, in the game, you do generally want to know how many cards people have in their hand. For one thing, to make sure they're not cheating. And, of course, nobody is, right? So, you put that up there. And it will tell you the hand counts of everyone, but you do have to refresh it yourself. It does not auto-update. So usually at the beginning of everybody's turn, it's pretty good. You can hit refresh. Nobody has any cards, so there's nothing listed there right now. Okay? The next button is shared windows. And we're going to come back to that. I'm not going to cover that at this moment, but we're going to get to it real soon. The next button, save image as ping file. If you want to take a... If you want to take a screenshot of something awesome happening, that's the way to do it. Zoom controls we've already covered. Let's say we're at going for the full immersion experience and playing at 100%. Now the next button is the overview window. And if you click on that, look at that. You've got a little bird's eye view up in the corner of the entire board. And wherever you click, that's what you're going to get in the main window. So that's pretty handy and a lot of fun. Although tactically I tend to like to stick with seeing the whole board all the time. So let's do some things here, shall we? Let's bring some cards into our hand. So I'm going to hit control R. There's my hand. Get it up and out of the way a little bit. And oh, before we do that, our skills. When you begin a game, you have to lay down your skills, right? In my case, investigation, I click on it, right click, and I can increase and increase to two. And that's control close bracket. You don't have to hit control, you don't have to right click all the time. So I'm going to, my detection, same thing, and I'm going to be a jack of all trades. Investigation two, detection two, combat two. Drag a box around all three buttons. Right click and select lock. Control L. Bam! As you can see, we've locked Investigation 2, Detection 2, Combat 2. And these buttons now can no longer be manipulated. They are part of the scenery and those are our skills. So let's open up that hand again like we were talking about. And let's get our investigations worth of skills. Of cards, rather. Two cards. Right click on it, select number of cards, multiple cards, enter, in my case, two, because my investigation is two. And I drag them and put them into my hand in the number one slot, always the number one slot, even if there's already a card there. Okay? 
Because look, as you add cards to your hand, one by one, put them in the number one slot, see what happens. They begin to move. They fan themselves out. And you can't have any more than five cards in your hand, so when you start discarding cards, watch what happens again. They work their way back to the left. So always put cards in the number one slot. Because... Let's put, I don't know, three cards in our hand. If we put them in the number five slot, look at what happens. Hmm, it seems like we only have one card, don't we? We have to scroll across, and there's everybody else. And then we have to drag them back this way. And when you move cards in your hand, they flip over, and that can be a bit of a hassle. So just don't do it. Always put cards in the number one slot all the time. Okay, and incidentally... Remember our hand counts? Let's refresh it. Well, Red's got five cards in his hand, so that's helpful. Now let's look at shared windows. Let's say you have to show someone your hand. Here's my hand. Somebody played suspicion on me, maybe. So I open a shared window. Let's say yellow played suspicion on me. So I go to the red-yellow shared window. There it is. I select the cards in my hand and I flip them over. This is vital. Flip them over by right clicking and choosing flip or just pressing control F. And I drag them into the shared hand. And I flip them back up. If you brought them into the shared hand face up, then the names of the cards would all reach out right, they all read out right here in the chat window. So flip them. There you go. Now let's say Mr. Yellow has seen your cards. He's happy. You're happy. Everybody's happy. You select them again. Flip them and drag them back into your hand. Bam. There they are face up again. <clears throat> now let's say that Yellow played Street Bandits on you where he gets to pick a random card from your hand and take it. Select all your cards and flip them once again. Put them in the shared hand but don't flip them face up. Now he's not gonna see these inset images here. You know what the cards are, he doesn't. He only sees the back of the cards, so he's gonna steal one at random, at which time, let's imagine he took that one, I'm just discarding it, at which time you say, enjoy your card, and you don't flip them over, and you bring them back to your hand again. And you have to close the shared window manually. There's no keyboard shortcut for that. Just click on the window. There we are. And if we look at our hand counts again, our hand count is now two, which is certainly correct. Um, last things, the counters. If you right click on your counter, let's go 100% here to get a better look. Right. If you right click on him, you got kill. If you were killed by a replicant, you can choose that and it'll send you to your home. You got text label. This is very helpful because if you had to play Desperate Leap, say, and you have to miss your next turn, just choose it. And there it is. Miss next turn. And after your missed turn concludes, you can hit it again with Control T, delete it, and bam. And finally, the third option is reverse. If you're kind of OCD like me and you like your piece to be facing the direction it's actually going, Hit reverse, there it goes, whichever way you want. And so, there we are. I believe that's everything I want to say about Blade Runner Rep Detect on Vassal. But by all means, if you have questions or comments, please leave them here and I will answer you. And I hope to see you in the game. Incidentally now, I'm going to be, for the next several weeks I should be around on the Vassal server every Friday night from 10 p.m. to midnight to have a game with you so come on down and give it a try and um, yes I believe this concludes our tutorial and I hope to see you in the game take care bye bye